Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. You can come to my store here in Houston, The Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And today, in front of me, I have a, a whole new Bio Dude line that I've been working on for almost a year with testing, formulating, and it's finally launched and ready to go. And what I'm showing you guys today is my all new arachnid specialty bioactive substrate called Terra Arania. This is a very unique, one of a kind substrate that works for all biomes that your tarantulas, scorpions, centipedes, or spiders require. Not only does it retain all tunnels and burrows, it also aerates from the very top to the very bottom, while effectively holding moisture in very particular areas that you need to help your BioShot with the positive aerobic bacteria that it brings in, as well as the mycorrhizal and the plant nutrients to help outcompete your anaerobic bacteria and your other negative fungus and molds, which is the number one problem when you're dealing with tarantulas and scorpions molds from improper moisture content improper draining and just overall bad substrate not only will the arania help with your high humidity uh, tarantula needs such as your pink toes or goliath bird eaters you can also use an extremely deep deep substrate level like you do with the pharma for some of your other baboon tarantulas and other types of inverts that want to create massive extensive tunneling systems in the terrarium it also works in a dry desert biome in the same aspect of staying dry at the top and moist in the middle and bottom while effectively aerating. Now a lot of people ask me, Josh, why can't I use the Arania for my bearded dragon? Why can't I use the Arania for, uh, you know, for my crested gecko? And the reason is simple. A lot of most other reptiles and amphibians, if not all, they need variances throughout their day. Uh, the Terra Arania is designed to do one thing and one thing only, what you tell it to do, and it stays there with as little maintenance as possible. So tarantulas and scorpions and most inverts like it one way or the highway. There isn't variances, there isn't up and downs. If they want humidity, they're gonna go deep down as far as they can and they're gonna stay there for, as, for forever because that's what they want. There are a lot of tarantulas in captivity that they say that they're burrowers and things like that, but it's also been noted that a lot of these tarantulas like to have higher humidity, uh, which they're doing the tunneling and burrowing behavior to get to the humidity pockets that they need. So the Arania is good for getting to where you want it and keeping it exactly where you want without any fluctuations. It also has larger, clunkier pieces in it that if ingested by your larger lizards could be harder for them to pass regardless if they're healthy or not. This is strictly designed for tarantulas, scorpions, centipedes, and spiders only. So it has, this is one of my most in-depth substrates as far as components. It has over eight different ingredients in it, and it took me over a year to get it right. Not only did it come with extensive testing, it also came with professionals testing it. If you guys go under the six quart bag under the website, you'll see a good number of honest reviews from people that have 10 plus years of tarantula keeping experience that use this substrate for their collection. From slings being kept in vials to adult Goliath bird eaters being kept in 75 gallon tanks. Work great every time. And what I have in front of me is an eight by eight by 12 Zoomed, uh, excuse me, Exoterra Terrarium that I am going to be escaping for you guys today to show you how to create a humid uh, Terra Arania bioactive kit. And the species that I'm going to be building for is a small pink toe tarantula. So this size terrarium is great for a sling uh, to maybe slightly older. Uh, you know, whereas if you were dealing with an adult pink toe, you're going to want at least a 10 gallon vert or 12 by 12 by 18. Tarantulas can be pretty active, so it's important to make sure you give them lots of space, uh, you know, when they get to their adult full size. One thing that's really cool about the Arania that I can't wait to show you guys is a lot of the neat niches that spiders and tarantulas and scorpions have, they, a lot of them use the soil as part of their hunting process for either camouflage, for either specific types of traps, or for burrows. And when I get my African trapdoor spiders, I can't wait to show you guys a close-up of how well the Arania works to prov with providing complex tunnel and web structures that a lot of these spiders and tarantulas need to be evened out in captivity. 
It works for old world and new world spiders as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm first I'm going to grab this terrarium here. As you can see, I have the Arania in two sizes. I have it in the six quart size, which you can see here, and I have it in the three quart size, which you can see here. I decided to carry the three quart size because there's a lot of keepers that prefer to keep them in small tubs or small vials. So a three quart bag can go a really long way. It does not need a drainage layer, even if you're utilizing it for a high humidity invert. Instead, you treat it like the Firma with providing deep substrate that's at least five to six inches when you're trying to accommodate humidity of 70% or more that is consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid off of this. Now, I don't ever keep the backgrounds in these because what happens is crickets and other insects um, eat the background and then it gets into them and then your animals get the styrofoam in their bodies. It's not fun. So I never keep any of the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Terra Arania. And like I said, we don't need a drainage layer. Okay. Arania opened up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lightly get this nice and wet and misted. And you guys... Um, once I dump it in, I'll give you guys a really solid look at, you know, what it's composed of. Like the Sahara, this is a heavier substrate, but it's not as heavy as the Sahara. You want to treat it like all your other substrates that you get from me. Um, I do have a full blog on how to take care of it as well as this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump my three-quart bag of Arania in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to evenly... I'm going to open this up so you guys can get a better look. Okay. And I'm going to start to evenly distribute this. So you can see it's a, it's a very loamy mixture. Um, again, this is not like any of your other, other types of substrates on the market, just like my Sahara. There's, other, there's, there's people trying to pop up to come up with something similar, and I tried it. And all i got to say is those methane pockets can be deadly, and you better make sure that it isn't compacting and causing those methane pockets because that can kill your animals. So we have the very first layer of the Terra Arania. And since this is going to be for Pinto Tarantula, it's going to have a slightly higher humidity complex. So the bioactive kits for the Arania, I have the species specific as well as the individuals. It always comes with cork bark cases, spag moss, and leaf litter, depending on the biome. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the cork bark pieces, and I'm going to put some of the cork bark pieces in here. Now, the reason I like using cork bark pieces is, A, not only does it help with tunnel retention, it also helps creating with microbial hotspots within the substrate, um, as well as helping aerate it. So there's a lot of positive things that cork bark pieces do, not only for your substrate, but for the long-term benefits uh, of your terrarium and your uh, tarantula or spider or scorpion or centipede. So then we have the cork bark pieces. Then I'm going to take the spag moss and the leaf litter, and I'm going to open it up just like that. I am then going to take my mister, and I'm going to get this to be... Uh, moistened up a little bit. Now the reason I'm doing this is just because I like to get the spag moss to be wet but not dripping and then I'm going to thoroughly mix it into the substrate. Next, right like that. All right, I'm going to close this one second. Let me get this nice and even. So just, so just like some of the other substrates with the spag moss being mixed in whether it's wet or dry, very, very slowly will it break down, and then as it breaks down, it'll provide organic nutrition to your substrate, as well as help retain tunnels and burrows and help raise your humidity. So after we have the biodegradables mixed in, we're going to add in my proprietary BioShot. And what the BioShot is, it is essentially um, a, a, a fertilizer that comes in organic forms, as well as cultured uh, bacteria and funguses that form symbiotic relationships with plant roots as well as break down organic matter and feces. Now, the BioShot allows you to be completely bio with BioDude setups. They're one of a kind. One thing I will tell you though with tarantulas and scorpions, centipedes and spiders, is that if you plan on using isopods and springtails, it's very important that you not only A, monitor the population density of both, because over time, especially isopods, can overwhelm your spider. 
it can happen, especially your larger, more invasive species, such as your powder blues, giant oranges, larger species like that. If you are going to go with isopods in a, in a biodude setup for the tarantulas, you want to go with the smaller species, and you always want to make sure the population doesn't get out of hand. Springtails, it's really not that much, um, you know, really not that big of a overabundance issue, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. So what I've done so far, we got the Arania in here. We got moist sphagnum moss, leaf litter, and cork bark pieces mixed in. If you were going for a drier biome, you wouldn't add any water. You would simply mix everything in and mix in the bio shot. Boom, you're ready to go. So the next step here is going to be decorating. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I have a pothos here. Now the reason I grab the pothos is because they grow very easily. They can handle dim light. Uh, and they can handle neglect and humidity. So it overall just makes it really easy to use when you're dealing with spiders that might use the, might use the leaves, stems, and other articles of the plant to um, help reinforce their webs. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant this right in the middle here, right like this. Yeah, right in the back like that. And then I got some cork tubes. So I got a cork tube here. I'm going to put in right here. Excellent. Let me move this around. And I got a small piece of spider wood. This stuff's real popular. This is real cool stuff. I really like it. Um, I got a piece of spider wood here. Okay. Let me turn it around really quick because I can't. Yeah, I can deal. So we got the spider wood right here. It's for a water dish. I'm using a monkey pod. So all of the species specific kits come with nut pods. It's not always going to be a monkey pod. It might be something different. Um, but you will always get a nut pod with a species specific Arania kits. We have over 60 of them listed on the website, all individually built and catered to the needs of every single different type of tarantula, sp spiders, and whatever else that uh, I was able to come up with and to make husbandry easier for you guys as the keeper. So it's pretty simple. We have the Arania biodegradables mixed in. I have a cork tube um, in here. And you know what? I'm actually not that sold on the tube like this because she's not going to be able to get inside of it. So it's really important that you give your spiders options as well, just like your other reptiles and amphibians. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this right here like this. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this right here, like this. There we go. I can deal. So now she can get into here because we're going to be small enough that the sling can get inside this. And the, the, the spider wood will give her options as far as webbing is concerned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a light mist right like this. I'm going to fill up the monkey pod with water. And look at that, it holds water. That's pretty cool. Yet another cool thing about going natural is using natural nut pods. So then we got, we're going to put the lid on right like this. As far as maintenance is concerned, you're going to want to mist it once a day if you're dealing with a high humidity. Uh, but it's going to be different for everybody. Next step is installing the LED. So let me move this over here. OK. so. We have the LED, my six inch grow and glow that is also included. A grow and glow is included with every species specific tarantula peat kit. Now, when installing your grow and glow LED, you're going to plug in the adapter, okay? So the adapter is plugged in and ready to use. And you see the switch here? Here's the on switch where the line is. You're going to turn it on. Then you're going to take your LED out of the box. Right like this. You can see it right here. And then you're going to carefully, slowly start installing. Now, the moment that it turns on, you stop turning. Because if you keep turning it like a muscle man, you're going you're gonna to break the LED. I did reinforce the wires back here for the fourth manufacturing run to help prevent overturns. But I, I have had a couple people overturn them from just <laughs> We don't do that. 
Really, really simple. All LEDs, when you get them, come with a nice instruction guide to show you exactly how we did it, prevent that from happening. When you receive your Arania kit, you will also get the dude's guide to the Arania. Um, if you decide to gut loader or create, those feed, create a feeding station, we have info about the bug grub, about the bio shot, and of course, how to take care of your plants. As far as maintaining your husbandry and making sure, I highly recommend utilizing my brand new all-in-one digital thermometer hygrometer. And I'm going to show you guys right now how to use it. So, the, so this is my brand and I'm so excited about these. So I was carrying the Vivarium Electronics line and they were, uh, I kept having the same recurrent issue of the probe getting stuck at 99%. So the, this probe is now upgraded, so that is not supposed to happen anymore. And you can see it's completely branded, comes with the battery, and you put the battery right in the back here. And then it displays the temperature in either Fahrenheit or Celsius and the humidity factor. And you can put the probe wherever you want in the terrarium, and it works. Um, so you can see here's a really nice, simple Terra Arania kit. You know, so this would be the 8x8 eight, the eight eight platform size and you can see everything that comes with it to give you a nice full appearance for your tarantulas and again guys I'm, I've been really excited to get this launched I've been getting a lot of positive feedback for it there's a lot of good things happening this year I just did a video on my updated warehouse tour and I forgot to mention something really big I am going to be on Animal Planet this year um, at uh, towards the end of the year a show called Animal Cribs with uh, Antonio Balatore flew me out to uh, to California uh, and, and and Santa Monica and the the bio dude and Antonio built two bioactive bearded dragon enclosures for his show. My website got a huge promo on that, and I'm so excited for it to launch. When it does launch, I'll be sure to upload that episode uh, onto my YouTube channel. Again, guys, my name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of the Bio Dude and Bio Dude Houston. Visit my website, thebiodude.com. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe. Do the bides.